As fall transitions to winter, there's nothing better than cozying up with a comforting home-cooked meal, especially when HelloFresh makes it so easy. Get up to 14 free meals plus three free gifts with code FACE14 at HelloFresh.com slash FACE14. HelloFresh.com slash FACE14. No, uh, we've been going One for a, yeah, like a, a second. We're just starting, but I, I loaded into a rank match just when everybody was like, we're going to go. So I'm in the sand right now in a Halo Infinite rank game, not expecting us <laughs> to be to be recording. Uh, so I'm doing two things at once at the moment. Jeff, what episode is this? Hello and welcome to <laughs> another episode of the <laughs> Face Podcast. My name is Jeff Ramsey. With me, as always, Gavin Free. And it sounds like we have one half of Andrew Panton's attention. Oh, no, uh, more must than be, I'd say 80%. Must be an important soccer match going on <laughs> if you're not paying attention. I uh, believe this is episode three. So- I think this is the second ep- or third episode of year two, season three. You've confused uh, me with that, which is though, exciting. you said... You said 81 should be the first episode of C- Series 3, Season 3, but then you made last episode. Well, see, no, you, you're you the reason for that. <laughs> oh. I said 81 should be, and then you said, we, we don't have to follow a specific path. They don't have to be the same number apart. And I said, okay, they won't be. We'll start the next episode. <laughs> okay. So there's one episode of difference. So each season will be incrementally longer than the previous Or shorter. Or who fucking oh. knows? <laughs> All I know is that this is officially... Well into season three, year two, and uh, year three is right around the fucking corner. I don't know about you guys, but I'm very excited to be in year three, season three. <laughs> I, that's when I feel like that's when we hit our stride. What if this is the season finale of season three? <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Ah, Can we go to season two four? episodes long? <laughs> I didn't really want to be in season three, but I'd be I like I'd love to be in season four. I support don't you that think fully. Season three of a show is always a really good season, though. What do you mean? now? I disagree. I'll go. You, I'll, go I'll go further. Uh, season three of Always Sunny was phenomenal. I uh, feel it was I easily know, I, the best season at that point, and the best season probably till season five, and then season, season seven, three so. of Friends. I think was good. Uh, like, All right, uh, well, shut up with that. Joey stuff. and Chandler had their stuff stolen. That was funny. Did they? Oh, was that season four? That might be season four. <laughs> is that the one where Joey and Chandler had their stuff stolen? Is it the episode title? <laughs> what is the? Or is it a plot? I don't remember. The I feel like the uh, Lost season three. I feel like sucks. I feel like Lost season three yeah. is a very well. Good. I feel like Lost sucks. Uh, how Strong about disagree. like like when you look at that show in its totality, you're like, no, I wasted my time. Absolutely not. I couldn't disagree mm. more. This is really, this like, is as bad like as your Home Alone opinions, which we don't need to get into now. First off, you're gonna piss off Eric. First off, going for I, I want let me let me finish. I, I was gonna say it's not just TV shows. And things with seasons that are the third of the best. I think the third song on an album is almost always the best song on the album. <laughs> you guys ever uh, notice that? No. What was it's the first? It, if I listen to a new album, I listen to the third song first every time because I know <laughs> that's where the because the first song is always going to be a fuck around intro bit. Then the second song is like, that's, and the third song is when like you get you get like fucking. That's when they kick it in, and that's when it what gets. What was the good. third song on Thriller? Um. Oh, I don't it. know, but it's probably the best song. Yeah, there you go. Oh, is that the right? And that's just a list of singles. Track listing. The Girl Is Mine. <laughs> a <laughs> underrated from song. The album. <laughs> that is a great song. What are you talking about? The Girl Is Mine's a phenomenal song. It's not song. the song of the album, though. Your whole point was the best song of the album is always the third song. That's not the best song of that album. I'm going to say always. Well, I guess I did say always. But I find it to be the case more often than not. There's probably exceptions to every rule. Uh, but I find it to be more often than not the third song is the best song. The um, oh god, cat just jumped. Uh, he, how many songs did he do with Paul McCartney? Michael Jackson. Yeah, he did say say say. Yeah. Right, and and the girl is and mine. And the girl is mine. I had that's more than I realized. And that might be it that I can think of. <laughs> I yeah. don't. So this is what I know. Is that Michael? Didn't Michael Jackson own the Beatles catalog? 
Wasn't that a whole well, thing? It's I, f- yeah, it's it's funnier than that. I yes, he see, did. like I kind of it's a thing that I vaguely know about, and the way it's described is almost like Paul McCartney got drunk and lost it in a poker game. Like I don't understand. No, no, I can how. I can I can tell you I can tell you the story as I remember I'd, it. I'd uh, love to hear it. Paul McCartney and Michael Jackson were friends. They played those songs together. They were Michael Jackson was getting advice. They were just talking about careers and stuff. And Paul McCartney said, uh, gave Michael Jackson the best fucking advice you can probably give a musician it's what taylor swift's going through right now uh we said you should own all your own music so you should if you can you should buy back the rights to all your music you should buy you should own the rights to music and michael jackson went oh that's really smart and then he went and said why 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 would i just buy my music the beatles are really good i'll buy their (laughs) stuff too and he had the money to do it he said i just own own the rights to your shit too while i'm at it why not it's great advice that is fantastic and he didn't. It wasn't a move to be like, "Hey, I got this for you, Merry Christmas." Could you imagine coming no, it was downstairs? Like, Thanks for your advice. That was really smart. I'm gonna make. I'm gonna build Wonderland or Neverland Ranch now off the proceeds of Apple Records or whatever. <laughs> I I couldn't imagine a cooler Christmas gift than coming downstairs and then seeing the entire Beatles catalog is now yours. You just own this. Open up the <laughs> gifts, just all of the Beatles rights. What a time! That'd what a weird cool. thing. Why didn't Paul McCartney? Do that ahead of time. Why did he not? Why? Did, how did he have the foresight? To I don't do? think he realized that Michael Jackson was going to turn around and buy all his shit. No, but if he all the shit that if he <laughs> knew that was a great idea, how did he like? How did he know enough that you should do that? Yet didn't. What does he own? Who saw? Did he just have <laughs> his? Like, is this just? Uh, I give great advice, but don't follow it. No, I'm sure he probably owns like the full catalog to Wings, which was a huge band. Uh, and uh, probably all of his solo stuff, and who knows? Maybe he owns, maybe he owns the rights to some of the Beatles stuff he wrote. I have no idea. I'm not close. Paul and I aren't close. I'm just retelling the okay. story that I remember as I remember it from when I was a kid. I feel like there could be worse people that own the entire Beatles catalog than aren't that aren't that, that aren't Jackson. Like I feel like weirdly, and I, people like unfairly take digs at Ringo. It just it would be hilarious to me if Ringo ended up with it all. <laughs> I like Ringo Starr so much. He has so many albums. He has too many, too many albums. And I say that with one peace of us and should love. buy. One of us should buy face. <laughs> yeah. What's it worth? Uh, I don't know, but you're the one. <laughs> it sounds like you're volunteering. Let's get a price, Eric. What's it worth? Yeah, I was gonna say. I feel like this is just a scam where Eric will tell us an amount and we'll give it to him, and he'll just like write on a piece of paper <laughs> that you own it. <laughs> like, this is a great idea. This is how NFTs work, I think. So <laughs> we'll say we'll say sixty thousand. Sixty thousand. Yeah. So if you want to make that check out to me, that's fine. I'll put five. I'll put five hundred bucks in. Wow, <laughs> Gavin, you come up with the rest. <laughs> <laughs> could I just buy episodes or do I have to buy the entire catalog? Yeah, you like, can buy individual own... episodes. However, they they are more expensive that way. Wait, All the cart if... options. <laughs> yeah. you, get, you get a volume deal. I have no idea if 60000 is an absolute bargain or a complete <laughs> ripoff. I have <laughs> what? I could... literally have no idea which well, way that would go. Can we buy somebody? Can we buy something? Can we enter I mean, the market? I mean, we're trying to buy a fucking superhero and it's not working. <laughs> That's, uh, I feel like we're more likely to buy some, like, kind of, who is, like, an artist that is known but not known? Like, not, like, it wouldn't be, I don't know. I'm trying to think. Uh, you would think we'd be more likely to, to buy the shit that we already own. This is our podcast. Yeah, but I mean, this didn't work out well for Paul McCartney. Well, uh, maybe we should, I th- we I should think pull I, I'm going to go, and- I'm going to. Well, he's dead as dicks, but I'm going to I'm going to assume Paul McCartney's doing just fine. Oh, right now, Andrew. totally fine. Financially and otherwise. <laughs> if we pull a Jackson, maybe we could just buy like black box down or something. I was going to say, yeah, oh, that, that's what we want to do. Like, we'll go. Yeah, let's go buy Face Jam. That'd be fucking awesome. What is we'll buy one? Of that's our, fine. One of our you can, that's 60,000. Also, you can just make, write me a check for 60,000. <laughs> Do you know what Dude, I wish wing, you could do? The, oh, go ahead. Eric was just saying that he probably owns the Wings stuff, and I was just going to say that's... I was just going to say, I don't, I don't think Wings gets enough credit. It was a fantastic band. Fantastic music. Were they, were they uh, Live and Let Die? Was that technically Wings? Mm. I believe so, yeah. Mm. And Band on the Run, and yeah, there were so many. What were they running from? <laughs> <laughs> Michael Jackson. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love the idea that Paul McCartney regrets that, and he's like he's like seventy eight years old and sitting at his fucking 
kitchen table balancing his checkbook going, God damn it, Jackson. I, uh, what? <laughs> Here I am broke trying to pay the bills. I'd only listen to my own advice. To what? And could could we just like throw it on eBay as like an auction? Like, could that is that like a path? What are the rules to? I feel like there must be rules to this. You can't just buy. It's not just like an open market. There has to well, be. Well, it has like to be for sale. I think step one, you got to find something that's for sale. Hmm. Yeah. I think mean, I think I think that's where you're gonna get hung up. We. You're right. You can't just buy anything. It has to. Well, I mean, to be if, available if for the purchase. price is right, I'm sure you could buy it anything. Unless it's that's a pinball true. machine. <laughs> Those I was uh, tough negotiations. Yeah, I was trying to buy a pinball machine recently, and the guy basically was like, "You know what? I'm not gonna sell it. My kid wants it." And I assumed he was, he just wanted more money because he was like, "You know, maybe if the price is right, I'll give my kid the difference, and that will justify him losing his pinball machine." So I was like, "Oh, this freaking guy trying to trying to con me out of money." So I offered him more, and he was like, "No, seriously, my son really wants to keep it." <laughs> the, the negotiation just died. <laughs> I was like, why is it on the market? Doesn't sound like it is. Yeah, so some, I, I guess I, I should have just kept offering, like, not that I would pay it, but I, could, I should have just seen what the guy's price truly was. Yeah. At what point will he betray the request of his kid? I'd love to know what that number is. Do you ever wish that you could just try stuff out that's illegal? But <laughs> <by st> <laughs> what <laughs> no, do you wait. mean? Like, well, I, I basically, I wish you could try stuff, but... But up front, say that it's just a joke, so like, don't apply the law what? to it. No! I, I, what? No, good, what are you no, talking good example, about? <laughs> good example was, I was watching, uh, I, was, I was just like falling asleep to crap on YouTube, and at some point, I guess, it steered into the realm of like, customs agents, like documentaries about airports and stuff. <laughs> and they were like, <laughs> x-raying bags to see, like, oh, there's uh, 8,000 cigarettes in this, in this one. Oh, like, oh, there's a little bag of coke in this one. And it's always like, it always starts with the x-ray where they're looking for like containers that stand out from the rest of stuff. But then I just thought, what if you just filled an entire suitcase with just loose cocaine, like full to the brim of only cocaine? What would that show up like on the x-ray? And I thought it'd be really funny to try to see if I could get like an only cocaine suitcase through customs because it would just look like nothing. Gavin, you're but just also I don't <laughs> Go ahead. You're just describing a hidden camera prank show is all you're doing. <laughs> this is all you've done. Yeah, but you can't <laughs> usually do like class A. Gavin drugs just on... invented punked. <laughs> it doesn't need to be actual cocaine. You can get something that looks like you can do the exact same there is yeah exact Ashton Kutcher is just waiting in the you just said punk. <laughs> Your idea is punked. Yeah you uh punk congratulations illegal. Also, like, what a weird fucking, do you ever wish that, like, you get a get out of jail free card is how you set it up, and then your get out of jail free card is just being caught with a giant bag of coke. <laughs> like, it's not. The, yeah, the problem with the get out of jail free card is you would use it immediately on something dumb. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't actually want to do. You oh, would the shit yeah, I don't want to do a real crime. I don't, even, I don't want to sell the coke or anything. I just want to see. Okay. He just, that's what he just wants to do the coke. He doesn't want to sell it. <laughs> Let's say you get applied a get out of jail free card, right? Yeah. Except it immediately is used the moment you break any law of any kind. How much oh. more complicated your life would be? Jaywalking, technically a fine. Yeah. Like you got to always use the line. Rolling your life stop. would become so much more inconvenienced by like the small weird laws. What would you be saving it for though? Like, or what, what is do you just kill somebody immediately? You just no. immediately murder somebody. Like what do you do? You still have to live with the memory and the guilt. Of murdering someone. I no, don't see no, how no, that's no. Okay, I would never, anyway. okay, I wouldn't, no, I would immediately try to rob a bank. Robin Hood did it. He seemed good. <laughs> well, he didn't rob a bank. You know, there I would be, you know, there'd be some sort of a bullshit loophole where you try to rob the bank and the cops come up and you're like, no, 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 no. I have this get out of free jail or get out of jail free card or get out of free jail card. And, uh, and the cop goes, this is only, this is only valid in the continental United States. Or, yeah. This, uh, yeah, yeah this had to like, be presented before you committed the crime. Uh, yeah, it's yeah, invalid. Oh, Jay walked on the way those to the bank. Fucking bullshit Uno <laughs> rules. <laughs> it's like technically, uh, technically yes, but you, you are going to get out of jail free for breaking the glass to get into the bank. But yeah. everything, every offense <laughs> after that is technically a saying put the money in the bag, dickhead, was assault, and that was your first <laughs> <Yeah>. crime. <laughs> oh. Yeah, the, the crime would have to be victimless, and it would I have think, to, yeah. And I think you'd have to really read up on all of the laws because 
I assume people break the like road laws all the time. Oh, constantly. Yeah. Without even realizing, maybe. I wonder if there's like once you read. Can I? Is there just a book of laws? Can I just down, like where do I find the book of laws? <laughs> Well, it's the law, isn't it? It's like the well, document. It, I know it is. Okay. Is there a document? Can I, can I like airbud rule it and be like, there's no law saying I can't? Like, well, this when is you're defending someone in court, they're not saying like, they're not quoting laws from nowhere. It's written like the law is in place physically somewhere. Where do I state, download surely? the law? <laughs> I want to read how, all the how laws. Big, how, how big is the PDF of the law? Canadian Book of Laws, I'm assuming is what it would be called. <laughs> yeah, the Canadian Book of Laws. Now, now we know Damn what to get you for Christmas. Oh, I cannot wait to read, because we can find... I recently, and very comparable, I just recently read through the entire NFL rulebook, and there's some, there's some fun stuff in there. There's some Ooh. room to do whatever you want to do. There's like a thing. What? Speaking of it, this is actually a perfect segue. Fucking Gavin... Won Whoa. seven, seven coin tosses in a row. Last episode we recorded <laughs> or released. Yep. There is that a was, rule. That was fun to listen to, by the way. I heard <laughs> just that part. In, in the NFL, there's a rule where for the coin toss. So every game opens with a coin toss and the away team has to make the call. And then they essentially decide if you win, if you want the ball in the first half or the second half is your decision. And there's, I think, an advantage to having it in the second half. So there's, it's, you want to win the coin toss. Technically speaking, the people that are allowed to take the coin toss are, I think, captains of the team, either on the roster, off the roster, or an honorary captain, which typically is used for, like, members of the armed forces or, like, just, like, heroes of some kind. But technically speaking, you could hire a coin toss specialist as a team and have somebody who's just really good at coin tosses. I would love to take an <laughs> NFL coin toss. How could he be good at coin tosses? I, I think you could. What? You say that you won seven in a row last you, week. <laughs> you were even involved. Not only did I not flip any of the coins or I didn't even call the coins. You took the one I was going to have and I was left with the dregs. <laughs> yeah, but you, you won seven in a row. That coin tilted towards your favor. <laughs> I think you're... You are an above average coin tosser, and there's sadly no, <laughs> no. <laughs> official tournaments. I actually think it's the opposite. Uh, I think you're exceptionally bad. I think it was. I don't think it was a Gavin being good because he's he's had coin toss problems in the past. Okay, go uh, get your coins. But Eric. I think it's. I think it's Jeff your versus Gavin. I, <laughs> I'm not. I'm that just saying. Enough. I think it had more to do with you and less to do with him. I do think you're onto something though. Like I don't know why if you're a team. Uh, I don't know, Los Angeles Rams, uh, Eric's favorite team. Uh, what if you, what if you hired like the amazing Kreskin or Frederick De Silva or some like famous yeah. mentalist like Shimlin or like some or like one or like uh, uh one of those like people that the cops hire in who, to come in and who's like psychic and tell you how the how, like touch a piece of fabric and tell you how somebody was died. <clears throat> like I would have that person on retainer for every coin flip. <laughs> <laughs> I don't un like. Initially, when I read it, I thought, oh, they have to be a part of the staff. So like or maybe an active player, which you have a cap on. So like I would understand maybe not worth <clears throat> having a coin toss specialist, but it doesn't have to be. You could just have yeah. somebody that that's all they do and it doesn't impact you in any other way. And I feel like teams are not utilizing the, the fact that they could have a specialist in that position, such as Gavin. No, I agree. I think I think you've I think you've found a glaring loophole in the bylaw NFL bylaws that could be exploited uh, to the extreme. <laughs> <laughs> can, can all teams share the same tosser Ooh. or the same uh, coin guy, the, the coin toss Ooh. specialist? I love the idea of another team hijacking the coin toss <laughs> specialist next season. What a play that would be. Uh, no, I, well, I mean, I, I think per game, I don't know how that work. I guess it would depend on what contract and exclusivity you signed with the person you deemed your specialist. Could you the, here's the thing too, that thing snowballs, right? Like let's say, I don't know, Eric's favorite team, the Rams, they uh they hire a coin toss specialist. They hire like like somebody from <laughs> Vegas who's a mentalist who's really good at it, right? Pro coin tosser. Goes really well. It's so fucking successful that they put him on retainer on contract, right? He's now like on contract with the the a, a, Eric's favorite team, the Rams. And uh and then 
other fucking teams start to do it. How long until teams are trading coin tossers back and forth like players? <laughs> <laughs> They're like, more valuable. I would love to see the coin toss trade. <laughs> it's like, yeah, all right, we'll trade Adam Vinatieri and, and uh, this mentalist for uh, two first round draft picks. It would be such low value. It's like when you're trying to do a trade in Monopoly and someone's like throwing their get out of jail free card into the mix. It's like, wow, 50 bucks. <laughs> Little Thanks. did they know they jaywalked right before. Like it added, it's completely useless. Um, I agree. I, I think it would be amazing, and uh, I, it's something teams should take advantage of. It's it's yeah. upsetting that they don't. There's another just like quick other pivot for rules for a moment. You're not allowed to block a field goal that's going in under the grounds of like if you so it's it's impossible first of all because the ball is flying like thirty four. Yeah, feet. too short. Too short. But if you were able to do it. They could still disqualify it on the grounds of that's just unfair. So like if you it's like a weird like side rule where if you if you had a team of players drag a tree out in the middle of the play to block the kick. It's I mean, there's technically no rule against that, but it's unfair. I like that. Or, that's what you go. You go for a, get a tree. You, you, you don't go for something that's actually doable, like throw a helmet right. or kick a shoe. Or, or, like, I would or argue, how about you? How about you have like Taco Fall or Minute Bowl or Lexi Pokachevsky? A team did that. Or some that's there's a rule. Seven and a half foot tall dude who just shows up to block extra point. I don't know why they don't do that. No, they they did that. There's a team that did that, and it didn't work because he's even at like seven feet tall. You're way too short for how high the ball goes. <laughs> I don't know. That's, that's like a thing. That was the initial setting of the rule, but it's just I love the clarification. It's unfair. Like just there's no specifics to that. What do you deem as unfair? And I would argue, Gavin, it's easier to drag a tree out onto the field <laughs> than it is to hit a field goal kick with your helmet by throwing it. I, get, I agree. <laughs> I, I feel like if you can if you can throw a helmet at a kicked ball, you deserve to block the field goal. Uh, yeah, you should actually get points for that. I just really <laughs> want to see them like staple a jersey to the front of a tree and have it on a wagon and just see a team of like 11 guys immediately try to pull it out. That or it's probably hard to hit a field goal with a helmet, but there's 11 people on the field. So what if you're throwing 11 <laughs> helmets at once? <laughs> it's like you're carpet bombing. It's like, it's like that the uprights with helmets. That makes but a pretty a, good wall. When a plane takes off through like a flock of birds. Yeah. And, like, blows out one of the engines. <laughs> Best in your defense. Like you don't strike. even rush the kicker. Everybody just stands in place and throws their helmets in the air like it's a graduation and just hope. This oh is great. my god. We are innovators in the NFL. Yeah, we are. I feel like we're gonna I've been thinking a lot about 2022. That's next year, right? 2022? That's the one. Yes. Yes, is this I, in 2022 yet? Is this the last Ooh. one of 2021? Uh, I'm going to need some Eric on that. This is the last one of 2021. Okay. Well, that's good. I was trying to, I was thinking about next year, and then I realized, this is about an hour ago, then I realized I don't know what this year is, and I had to sit down and figure out it was 2021, uh, 2021 <laughs> still. Uh, so next year is 2022. I've been thinking about content uh, and what we can do, and uh, I, think, I, th I think that we can hit sports in a big way next year, and maybe this is it. Maybe we need to like, but maybe we need to we, we need to be rule innovators in in professional sports. I think that'd be great. That's I, puss I puss. Was... No, no, that's that's not puss puss. Thank you. That's a football. He's got a squeaky football. Oh. Uh, nothing else on earth matters or has mattered <laughs> to Henry Hatfield <laughs> in the last sixty days, other than this fucking football, and it is resilient. He usually destroys the squeaky toy by now or the, the squeaking mechanism, this thing is going strong. I don't know if the audience has ever noticed, but you only hear the squeaks when Jeff's talking. That's because <laughs> I assume Nick has to cut out the squeaks <laughs> from all of the other time during the podcast. <laughs> It's constant work. It's God. one of my you favorite things to hear somebody else talking <laughs> and like nobody else speaking except you just hear the squeak. Just the squeak in the background <laughs> of someone else talking. It's great. What's funny too is, is like, and and I, I truly believe this dog is a, is as intelligent as a human. Just just doesn't have the vocal cords. 
Because this motherfucker has been in this room with me all day. I've had three meetings in here, <laughs> like hour long meetings. He is silent. He doesn't care, but he knows, like he knows when f face starts, it's time to start squeaking. He doesn't do it on other podcasts that I sit in on, <laughs> other videos that I guest in on, no conference calls, no Zoom calls, no nothing. But this particular podcast, he's like, he just like wakes up. He's like, oh shit, I'm sorry, I'm on the clock. I gotta get, gotta, gotta get to it. It's bizarre. Oh man, I just looked at him and the way he's sitting, I saw th into his asshole. <laughs> <Ugh>. <laughs> That was a, a lot of dog butthole. Ugh. Right. Oh. What is HelloFresh, you ask, every time? Well, with HelloFresh, you get farm fresh, pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Mmm. Taste the seasons. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. The EFA, as we always say. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. Go America. The new year is a great time to focus on what's most important to you, whether it's saving money by ordering less takeout, learning to cook, or prioritizing your own wellness, or all of them. Why not all of those things? All of us for all of those things, right? HelloFresh is here to help with endless options to make cooking at home simple and enjoyable. Yay! I love I enjoyment. HelloFresh also offers pre-portioned ingredients to your door. Knock, knock, knock. Hello, ingredients, including farm fresh produce uh, that arrives within a week. So you get convenience without skimping on quality. Skip the trip to the grocery store, saving you the wait and long holiday lines and ensuring you don't waste money on excess food or catch 7,000 different variants of diseases. HelloFresh cuts back on time spent in the kitchen so you can spend it on your other resolutions. With meals ready in around 30 minutes or less depending on if you uh, are fast-forwarding through the meal, plus quick and easy meals, including 20-minute recipes and low prep and easy cleanup options, provide an even faster route to putting food on the table. And then on the table, it goes in your mouth, and then in your mouth and your tummy, and then, uh, well, we'll stop there. Don't forget dessert. Satisfy your sweet tooth with seasonal limited-time goodies like Dunkaroos, cookie dough, or vanilla delight cheesecake. <sighs> I have a bit of a cheesecake problem, if, uh, if I'm being honest with you. I don't know if we've ever discussed it. Uh, maybe we'll get into it someday. Anyway, go to HelloFresh.com slash Face16 and use code Face16 for up to 16 free meals and three free gifts. That's HelloFresh.com slash Face16. HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. Have you ever seen those little things that that people like put around the tails of their cats and stuff and it like drapes a little uh, anus blocker down so it like hangs in front of their asshole oh. like an like an asshole curtain yeah it's like if you don't want to see your cat's anus don't get a cat like what that's the most oh, what if we sold a f face anus curtain I hate oh, I this. Love it. I <laughs> hate it. Oh, is that it. a kitty butt plug? Oh, that's even worse because that seems sexual. No, it's not a plug. Uh, it doesn't go in their ass. I what think Eric just... showed is. No, I think that's hanging around its tail. It's is hanging it around its is tail. It? It, yeah, oh, it looks like it almost looks like a Medal you of Honor. You think they put that inside the cat? <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at a tiny thumbnail of a cat with a blue disc sticking out of its ass. I don't know how it got there. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> <laughs> what well, I don't I the here's my issue with this product. To me, it implies that you're looking at your cat's asshole so much that you bought a product to stop doing it. <laughs> that you just naturally word it. The fact that you had to spend money to get rid of this problem, I don't. It's just it's a strange vibe that that gives. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like it's kind of like at that point, like you're the one that keeps looking. Yeah. <laughs> The way that Nick is defending this product, it's like he owns six of them. It's like yeah. he, he's a big... <laughs> Nick is sitting on a cache of these things. Uh, that, that being said, I, this is a product I want to sell. <laughs> now that I know it exists. I absolutely want to put a face logo on that. So. <laughs> you should make sure it's not cruel. Like it doesn't get in their way when they're cleaning themselves and stuff. Because... Oh, it, it doesn't seem right to, to hang something over the anus of another creature. <laughs> it doesn't. Yeah, we do it to ourselves all day, every day. Oh, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> like, I've never... Gavin, you and I have been friends. How old are you? 30, what? 30, 33? 39? 33 years old? I've known you since you were 15. So what is that? 
28 years, 50, 18 years, like that. <laughs> whatever, I don't know. Yeah, whatever the math is. is. 18 years. Uh, I've never seen your asshole. I've never even come close to seeing your asshole. Uh, you've never seen my penis either. I've never seen your penis. I don't, <laughs> that, 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 unfortunately, that doesn't go, that, that conversation, <laughs> we can't say that both ways. Uh, you've seen my penis so much. But, uh, but uh, yeah, I have no idea what your butthole looks like. Um, I mean, I don't entirely know. I've never sort of yeah. gone in front of a mirror. It's not an easy thing to get a look at. Uh, what percent of Gavin have you seen? Asks Eric. You must have seen 90. Mm, you see me in, you see me in uh, like swim trunks. I've seen, I would say I've seen like 87% of Gavin. I've probably seen 10% of Andrew. Yeah. I'm trying to think, like, how do I even equate that? Hands and face, pretty much. Shins. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, first, uh, as a big shorts guy, I feel like ten percent is a low number. I feel like I more than that. I think a pants guy, you can maybe make that case. I mean, um, if if I'd ever seen your back, I would probably have seen eighty percent of you. I assume because <laughs> it is all back. Yeah, you're back. right. You're right. That's actually a great point. It is eighty percent back. <laughs> I have a question for you, Gavin. Okay. As we're talking about Jeff and I were talking, and it kind of relates to something else we should talk about that we're actually going to sell. That we haven't mentioned on this show yet. Um, but <laughs> is that what I think could, it is? Yeah, but before we get to that, I just I'd love to hear Gavin's thought on this. If you were if you were to sell a niche product for face, and you knew it would be like it would be fine, it would be profitable, people would buy it. Doesn't matter what it is. What would you pick? Oh my god, has it got to be something funny? No, it can be whatever no, you want. No, whatever Doesn't you have want. to be funny at all. Um, one of those things that goes over over the bread bag to keep it closed. I, what do you mean? Like uh, a, a clamp? Like, you, like, you, like a bread clamp? Not necessarily a clamp. Sometimes you get those things where it's kind of like a... <laughs> those, those plastic it looks like things? A dog, it, it, yeah, it looks like a dog tag with like a little divot cut in the middle and you just kind of shove it <clears throat> over the spun around bread packet. Looks kind of like Henry's anus, actually, now that I think about it. I don't what? feel like I'm imagining the right thing. Or Jeff is wildly incorrect based on that description. I'm or... thinking of... The thing that closes a bread, like when you buy it from the store, one of those plastic clips, right? Yeah. I I'm thinking of the, hold on, I'm going to pull up. A I thing. would immediately, like, I appreciate, I mean, that's a, that's loading. Um. Oh, yeah. Okay. That's uh, just yeah. a, a fascinating way to uh, describe that, yeah. Jeff. Holy shit, that came out on my birthday, June 19th. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> That's fucking badass. <laughs> me and the, me and the bread clip have the same birthday. <laughs> the bread expired on your birthday. <laughs> Look at a picture like that. Do you ever wonder who took that? Like who thought I'll, I'll get a close up of this and post it? Was it taken I... specifically for Wikipedia? I don't, yeah. <laughs> oh, dude, that's the official Wikipedia one? <laughs> <It's Jeff's birthday. laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> that's so good. I don't know what that means, but it means, it definitely <laughs> means something. <laughs> yeah, uh, oh, uh, I love it. face one of them. I, I, do you use those? I never use those after the first use. Are you are I you a the, are you like a spinner and then crusher kind of guy? Uh, yeah, you like I'm a, yeah, I'm put a the weight of the bread, the weight on of the bread. The, yeah, yeah, generally. Yeah. They're a little tedious. Yeah. I find those things. I I a spin and tuck is 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 what you do. What's a spin and tuck? It's exactly what we just described. Yeah, you spin it and then you you put the the other end under the bread and let gravity handle it. Yeah, yeah. I do that as well, but only after that piece of shit little clip breaks on the second because <laughs> they suck. <laughs> so if we had a, I high mean that quality... one's probably good. That's a display model. I'm sure that one's made out of titanium or something. But yeah, what if we had a high quality aluminium custom cut f face bread closer? Ooh. I don't think you'd be a, a spin and tuck guy after that. What if it what? was Ooh. really nice and smooth to put on too? You didn't have to like get it caught in the plastic. It was just like I, a deluxe premium item. I love this idea because I feel like this product was invented and hasn't been innovated on since that time. It's been the exact same for her, however many years. We could even make it collectible. Yeah. Collectible bread clip. Yeah. Like everyone has a different date on it and there's one for every day of the year. <laughs> You know how we can get away with this too? This is this is how we capitalize on this. So this is great. This is the new metal straw. Do you remember when everybody got all up in arms about straws and then they were like, holy shit, they're destroying the environment? This is yeah. plastic too. 
We got to eradicate plastic bread clips. They're destroying the fish. That's a fish killer right there. You're looking at a, that thing murdered a trout. You need a metal aluminum permanent bread clip. You buy it once, you have it for the rest of your fucking life, and you save the fish, save the world. Think about future generations. Think about our children, for God's sakes. But are they selling the bread just open then? Like, how are they closing it in the stores? Probably with a twist tie. <laughs> I thought you were saying... <laughs> I thought your point, Jeff, was that we make an alternative to that. Yeah. And then it's just yeah. the whole world adopts the f face bread clip. Yeah. We take it over. I love it. I like I this idea a lot. I feel like I must market. have 10,000 of those in my house because I lose every one and I've never seen them again. I don't know where they go. I have pieces of 10,000 of them for <laughs> sure. <laughs> Why do you keep them? What do you mean? You said you had a load of them. They get lost. Yeah, like I they I lose them immediately and I've never seen them again. So I feel there's some Okay, so they have to ours, be somewhere. ours needs to be magnetic then. So you can have like a little <laughs> storage spot for it when you when you've got no bread in. Uh -huh. And then you know exactly where it is every time you buy bread. Ooh, I love it. Mm, okay. Well, if it has to whatever we do, it has to be compatible with the the wrist pocket and how that, that oh. carries. Whether so it's, it's velcro or velcro, <laughs> whatever it is, it needs to be part of that. I feel like we've gotten off track on some of our wrist innovations the last couple of weeks, which I get. I mean, it's the holidays. We've got a lot going on. There's a lot of business to close at the end of the year. So I, I think that we're going to dive back into that early, early in 2022. Uh, and I, I agree with you. I think this is we're going to end up. Oh, my God. We're going to have the most amazing utility belt of dumb shit when we're done with this thing. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of dumb ideas, I did literally just had the best dumb idea while while you guys were talking about this. I was thinking yeah. of shit we could sell that people don't currently sell that makes so much mm -hmm. sense. We sell two left socks, right? That's a dumb joke yeah. that we have because of my sock issue. Uh, but we kind of you don't. know what we, nobody we sell the left left sock and the right left sock. <laughs> yeah, we sell the left left sock and the right left sock. Do you know what nobody on earth sells? Go for it. Bread. A clips. pair of socks that has an extra sock. Three socks. Three socks. Because you always lose a stock, yeah. sock in the dryer, right? So you buy, buy, a, buy a pack of socks, but it has a third extra sock. Then you set that aside, and in a month, when you can't find your, extra, your other <laughs> fucking sock because you did your laundry and it's gone forever, you just break out the extra sock. Boom. It's the same thing as when you buy a button-up <laughs> shirt, and they sew that extra button on the inside. Yeah, but it's like they sew a shirt onto the inside of the shirt. It makes no sense. <laughs> no, it makes total sense. It makes total sense. Everybody I'm loses socks. Jack. No, yeah, I, I have a, I have a, I have a drawer full of, full of unmatching socks because socks go li missing constantly. I, this I would, makes sense. We should nobody should ever sell two socks no. again. You should only sell socks in pairs of threes. But if you're worried about it, buy two pairs of everything. Four is better than three. Why would you ever mm. want three? Because no. then at least, at least with the four, you can use both pairs until That's you drop one. That's ludicrous. That's ludicrous. Why stop at four? Buy a hundred. I agree with Jeff. I think all socks need to be Jeff? sold. I do. They need to be sold in odd numbers, and then you have a separate drawer that oh. is your for not in use socks. And then whenever you're missing, you lose a sock, you go but into the not in use socks. Immediately and at you're the covered. beginning, you have spares. If you have four, there's no waste from storing spares. You just have socks all the time that can be worn. No, because then I'll be upset that I've now lost. Okay, so if I have three socks, no. Gavin, let's say yeah. I have four. Let's say I have two pairs, right? Yep. I lose one sock. Now I have a pair and a half. And then I might lose another. Then I have one pair. If I have the, three it's socks, the psychology behind it. Yeah. If I lose, you just if I lose one. The worst case scenario being what you want. You were like, no, 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 it's no, inevitable. No, he's right. It will happen. But instead of losing two pairs, I have just gained one because I had yeah. a third. Exactly. When I buy four socks, I can't <laughs> like even if I'm buying, say I buy a pair of socks that comes with two extras. I'm not buying a pair of socks that comes with two extras. I'm buying two pairs of socks so that when yeah. I lose one of the socks, now I'm down a pair of socks. That fucking sucks. But if I only buy one pair of socks and then I lose a sock, <laughs> if I can break out the extra, then I'm back up a pair. It makes total sense. Oh, my God. We got to do this tomorrow. I just Jeff and I looking at a package that says one pair of socks plus two spares and just be like, you can't fucking trick me. That's just two <laughs> pairs. <laughs> I'm buying this bullshit. <laughs> oh, my you're God. Both psychopaths. 
No, it makes well, it we're going to be rich psychopaths. So we're going to be sitting on a fucking pile of gold that socks. And then built. you know what we're going to do once we got all that fucking sock money, Gavin? We're going to buy your bread clip right from underneath <laughs> you. We're going to jackson you, <laughs> and then there's nothing you can do about it. You two are both about just kidding yourself. It's like people who set their clocks ten minutes. But uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> Did you travel in time 10 minutes when you said that? Like, it was, you left this plane of existence. I'm just too annoyed. I love when your, I love when your brain can't catch up to your mouth. It is one of my favorite things. Oh, oh shit. Hey, you know what I mean. Oh, my God. I, I wish I did. Oh. I, <laughs> I, have, I have two product ideas. Okay. That before Jeff has I forgot, new, I forgot you asked me one. this question. Yeah, with that's the how we got saying here. what you wanted to come up with. Well, <laughs> I, do you want to say yours, Jeff? Because yours were great too. I don't feel like uh, we yeah, had minor, a bad idea of this. Mine are toilet related. Typically, uh, I wanted. I would like to sell f face bidets. Uh, I mean, we already <laughs> humped bidets for for fucking advertisers, right? So why not? And it's something that I use every day of my life, multiple times a day. It's something that's brought me a lot. It's changed my life. So I think a, a, a so so in Siri, in all seriousness, a f face branded bidet I think would be great because I feel like it'd be it'd be spreading cleanliness to the world, and I want to promote that. The second one is more of a joke. I think we should sell giant pink porta potties. I think that would be fun too. Full size, like functional. Yeah. Like why huh. you, you always go down you always go down to like the park or like at a construction site and you see it's like shitomatic or like <laughs> whatever their fucking brand is you know the turd bird or whatever why not want to just says f face yeah <laughs> yeah um, yeah I feel Facebook like but for your butt <laughs> it'd be cool to be at venues like when you see them all in a line like like festival shitters if they all just said f face on them. I just feel like no one's gonna buy a one-off face <laughs> bog. I I suggested we get some like bootleg Legos and have a build your own shitter type thing. Have yeah. your own little set, which could be great. To um, which I suggested we should sell dioramas of Andrew's apartment room. Of his <laughs> <laughs> let people like let people navigate around and move the sushi <laughs> container and yeah, it'd be fun. I want to like a shot for shot remake of that Halo 3 diorama trailer, but with all just shit from Andrew's <laughs> apartment. Was, was that Halo 3 or was that Reach? It was Halo 3. Because it was Master that Chief. Fucking, that, that was an amazing, amazing commercial. So I have two product ideas, and one of them Jeff knows about. Okay. Okay. One of the, should I go with the one you know about, Jeff, or should I go with the one I have today? Because I think the one I have today is a real fucking winner as well. Oh, well, let's um, let's go with go with the old one, and then we'll then that'll okay. Be the, so the first one, the this is like movie. a strange. I can't wait to hear your reaction to this. You know the channel, Gavin, uh, where it's just a burning log, and it's for like they play it over the holiday season. <laughs> yeah, I want us to do one of those, but there's like no bit. I just want us to make one of those, and I want to be the log guy because I feel like I'd be a great log guy. I what watch does the those log guy do. Yeah, he like throws an extra log in, he pokes the fire, he distributes it, he keeps the flame going. You gotta have good technique. I'll watch those for a long time, and I've got a lot of opinions on log technique. Some of them, the guy just has no log management skills at all. His placement is all off. I would love to do one of this. Do you just see a, the log guy? Yeah, every once in a while you see the hand come into frame, and they start poking it with the fire <laughs> poker, and they throw another log in. The log management by some people in these tapes leaves a lot to be desired, and I think we could come in and fill this market up. So we'll just see like your arms and shins. Yeah, you just see my arm come in every once in and a, a while. Poker. You see me throw a log in. You see that fire be maintained. I will keep that fire going for the entirety of however long this tape is. You do realize there'll be tremendous judgment on your log management skills. I am right. I have been, talked it up. I've been practicing in the shadows for years, Gavin, and I am ready to be judged. I have okay. an elite log management skill, I believe. Do you have access today to a to a fireplace? No, I do could, not. You could. Okay. We not. need to get one. I'm seriously, we need to get one. We need to film this, and then we just need to put it up on the face YouTube channel with no. <laughs> we should yeah. put the How appropriate metadata on it. Oh, it's got a loop. It's got to be hours long. Oh, it has to be so long. Like at least eight hours. Yeah, I'd assume. Yeah, eight hours, hours of real time. Yeah, eight hours of real time. Because yeah. you got to have real time to put new logs in. You got to be able to display the log management skills. I bet. And you this don't even is know actually how many logs you'll need. Oh, I've seen, you. You think I don't? You don't think I'm a big fucking fireplace guy around in the my holidays? Head, I know. In my head, you're a log rookie. Mmm. 
These are some fucking. You know what? I was gonna. I was gonna do it. I was gonna buy your dumb bread clip just as a gag. It's now personal. I'm not coming for that bread clip. I'm gonna get a patent in right now. As soon as we're done recording, I'm, I'm patenting our new. It already exists. It's a bread no, clip. No, not our new version. No, no. Not the new version with the magnets and whatnot. I just, I'm taking it. I'm patenting it. Can I say, Andrew? That this reminds me, this is I, I, in support of your phenomenal idea. This reminds Thank me you. of a conversation I just had with my girlfriend on Sunday. Uh, before huh. I even knew about this, before you even posed this question to me and you explained the, the fire idea to me. My girlfriend and I, she, we had a party at the house on Sunday uh, for like, uh, like a work party for her. And I, <clears throat> on the TV, just so you don't have like a fucking blame off TV. I would turn on, we turned on one of those fire, uh, one of those like Christmas, you know, fireplace videos on YouTube. And then we got obsessed with trying to find the seam in it of where it, uh, of mm -hmm. where it, it, it repeats because it's clear that the log is not burning down. And we probably f fucked around with that thing for throughout the course of the night. Probably spent about, tw I probably spent about 20 minutes staring at that thing, just trying to catch it repeating. And never able to, and just driving myself mad trying to figure out if the log was actually burning down or if it was just uh, if it was just repeating. And uh, I, I'm all about it. I think it's I, I now it's all I can think about is uh, I want I want to watch a fire actually go down over the course of like eight hours. I don't want to watch th three minutes of a fire on loop <laughs> for six mm -hmm. hours. No, those are bullshit. I want to watch eight hours of Andrew tending a fire, and I wish. We, I wish I could film it today. I could film it here. I have a gas fireplace, unfortunately, so it would be boring and lame. We should future-proof it. We should shoot it in, like, 8K or something. Oh, my God. That's a great idea. <laughs> 8K of footage yeah. of the fireplace. <laughs> Do you have the ability to shoot Hours? in 8K, Gavin? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Coming in 2022, just at some point... Some point during year three, season three, four, or five, potentially, <laughs> Face is going to release an eight-hour <laughs> fire tending film oh, on YouTube that is going to, you will ring in every holiday for the rest of your life in stunning 8K. It is going to be so crisp, and the fire is going to be so well tended, you'll swear you can feel the heat. I'm going to need some more memory cards. <laughs> 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 How big will that file be? Oh, like 20 terabytes. <laughs> <laughs> like, I can have most of a year to figure it out. Okay. <laughs> this is product two. I mean, I'd, first one, I mean, that sounds viable within itself. That's happening now. That's locked in. Second one, I think we could do. It's a summer item. So I think we're going into the season for it. It's, it's perfectly timed. Um, this is what I want to do. Let me save a photo of this. Um, Summer. What is a staple of summer? Summer fun. It's outside. You're gonna play. What What is a great childhood item? A toy. I guess you could call it. Paddling pool. Paddling pool is a great slip one. And you're slide. Right. Oh, yeah. Nick. Nick said slip and slide. Yeah. It. Slip and slide. A slip and slide is a is a fantastic thing. My images don't want to update, so I'm not gonna use an example. I'm just gonna explain it. This is what I want. Slip and slide. You know how they have like those things that you can inflate over a slip and slide, or maybe it's like a little bit to the left of it. I want What's one of those. Bit? Oh, it's just like a piece of, and sometimes it's an elephant. Sometimes it's just like a visual prop. It doesn't necessarily really matter. I want a slip and slide where either to the left of it or maybe directly in front of it is Pedro Martinez and you can be Don Zimmer. You run at Pedro Martinez, then slide down the slip and slide, get the real Don Zimmer experience. I think we should do a Zimmer slide is what I think we should sell. Is he holding out like an inflatable arm at the end that you just have to have hit you right in the middle of the head and push you down? <laughs> I'm, I'm open to ideas. I just want to slip and slide with Pedro Martinez at the front of it. <laughs> uh, I, I think we should fully investigate that. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> assuming that we, that for whatever reason, Pedro Martinez is not on board with this. And obviously he and the Zimmer estate would be. Uh, but if we run into any kind of licensing issues... <laughs> When you were saying it, I thought you kept saying slip inside. And that got me thinking, what if we made a slip inside, a slip and slide that's got a like it's like a tube that you uh, it's like inflatable. And then so you slip. It's like instead of going on a slip and slide, you go through a slip and slide and then you call it slip inside. OK, What's the but benefit what? Of no. Being in no, 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 some lights or no. something in it. I don't know. It's, it's like I can round this idea out when you enter the tunnel as you progress through it, it goes. Woo. Slip inside a burn tube. 
<laughs> which perfectly segues to what we need to talk about. <laughs> Nick doesn't Nick doesn't know about this. He wasn't here. Eric, uh, tell Nick tell Nick what it sounds like. Hey Nick, we have uh we talked about on our last break shit. Uh, we needed to uh, create a new piece of thing that you you know that tube that turns over that goes <laughs> yeah those they're called grown tubes and baby we're making them it's it's better than that Nick and and I'd like to apologize to the audience uh, we we made a uh, we made a promise a long long time ago maybe promise is a strong word we made a statement a long long time ago that we were gonna try to keep uh main uh like main. F- face canon out of the side stuff like the face break shit is 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 like side content i don't want if you just want to listen to the podcast i don't want you to miss stuff by that happens in the in the break shit because you don't want to watch that content i get it but unfortunately something happened so brilliant on the last break shit that they as the episode was starting which, by the way, feel free to watch this on YouTube or the Rooster Teeth site. It's a phenomenal video. As the episode was starting, uh, the, the guys got into a conversation about those grown tubes and what they were called. And before the episode was over, merch had our ecom had already had already mocked up <laughs> mocked up a version of it and submitted. We approved it. Eric approved it, and we had already submitted the order. They are on their way right now. Before the face break shit episode was over this product was on order and we're gonna call it the fuck <laughs> stick and i think it's phenomenal <laughs> and i we also discovered i'd never i had never seen or heard of these things before i don't know how you've avoided them it makes no mm. sense they didn't exist when i was a kid it was three people on <laughs> set just going <laughs> and jeff going what 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 it was perfect should we all do it now should we all do it at the same time to recreate what it was like yeah. Yeah, go ahead. So if you uh, if you didn't watch the face break shit, you missed an hour and a half of that. <laughs> anyway, I thought that was that was a brilliant example of of creativity and action. Had the idea, and before the show was over, it was it was already being built. I fucking I don't know when they're gonna come out, but you can watch it all on YouTube. You can, yeah, yeah, yeah. We have a yeah. YouTube. Channel. It's gonna be go to and you. And I'll be honest. I'm not trying to market our shit here or anything. Far be it. But you should probably go to that YouTube channel and bookmark it anyway, because in some six months to a year, the world's <laughs> best 8K fire footage is gonna come out, and you're gonna want to go back and watch. I, it. I would be terrible for the environment. <laughs> But it would be really funny to do one of those where it is one of those videos for like seven hours and then the fire leaves the fireplace. And then by like the end of the stream, the entire house around it burns down. <laughs> just everything's destroyed. <laughs> it just slowly zooms out as it's, more it, catches yeah. on fire. Yeah, or maybe it never even leaves frame. It's just like you, you kind of pull out from the beginning and can see the whole fireplace instead oh, okay. of being like right up in it like it typically is. And just like, <laughs> I don't know, maybe like a stocking catches on fire and then it just expands <laughs> and then the whole wall eventually gets. That'd be right. Terrible. Shouldn't do it. But it'd be funny. I mean, worse is done for movies. They burn shit all the time. That's, that's fair. True. It's a very good point. As long as you get it's the shot, that's all that matters. It is. Yes. Literally all that matters. I'm very excited to get my hands on a fuck stick and make the noise because I o- I only know the noise through you guys, and so I'm excited to see it in action. Which movie has the worst carbon footprint? Do you think in terms of like how much stuff or like how much explosions or maybe maybe something like Apollo 13 where they actually kept doing like vomit comet to get the zero g stuff? Mm. I bet that was terrible for the environment. Hmm. Oh man, I watched. Oh, hold on, do you talk amongst yourselves. I'm gonna Google something. Talk, yeah, talk I'm, trying to, uh, I'm uh, trying to think of, <laughs> <laughs> does it have to be that sound can we make it whatever we want like what is how does that sound get created i think it's just certainly the physics of it yeah i was gonna say nobody picked that sound that just had to have been the result <laughs> of there wasn't but someone somewhere accidentally put something in a tube once and went jesus <laughs> it's not like taking it back to breaking bad where they're trying the different dipping sauces there's no guy sitting at a table <laughs> flipping those over to a variety of noises that was like that one i want yeah that i one. feel like they didn't audition that sound <laughs> <laughs> what do you think the alternative sounds would have been if they were creating them deliberately 
I don't know, but I like the idea of it being like a child invented it. It was just like, Dad, I want a toy that goes. <laughs> if, if a slide whistle is from heaven, the the stick thing is from hell. In terms oh, of the absolutely, noise it makes. undeniable. Are you done googling, Jeff? Yeah. What is Jeff doing? Yeah. Like what? How long? No, I'm, I'm working on. I'm working on. Working on what? <laughs> He's like trying to find a movie. I'm thing? just trying to find a. I watched a movie uh, last year. We're talking about carbon footprint and just like t- <laughs> terrible things. I watched. You're this filling movie, Eric in uh, like he wasn't listening. <laughs> I yeah, watched I've this been here movie. the whole time. I got it. You don't have to reset. It's a podcast. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to find the name of the movie. It was, I believe, it was a a, a Michael Antonioni film. From the 60s, and I believe it starred Monica Vitti, uh, but I can't seem to, to track it down. Anyway, <clears throat> the point is, it was a really cool. Uh, it was a really cool movie about uh, I don't know, t- just uh, people in in Italy in the 50s that were uh, disconnected from their lives. Uh, but it was kind of like a. It had kind of like a weird, like industrial, almost like pre David Lynch industrial kind of like. Uh, portending that industrialization is going to destroy a uh, society kind of bent to it. And it was a black and white film, <clears throat> but they wanted to even such, they wanted to like desaturate the world. And so they got a bunch of lead, so, like silver paint and gray paint. And they painted all the trees and all of the nature Oof. permanently with this paint and just killed <laughs> oh my God. Jesus Christ. all the foliage in this area of Italy to make it look more industrial. Then, you know, they didn't realize what they were doing at the time, but yeah, it was just fucking brutal. And I bet that kind of shit happened all the time from like 1920 to like 1960. I was going to say Michael Bay, but I think <laughs> you won. Horrendous. I think you won. I think you took it with that. Yeah, it was fucked up. It's terrible. Was it La Note? No, it wasn't that one. Anyway, I'll figure it out some other. It's not important. You guys are never going to watch it. Yeah. Well, s- since we have to record two of these, we should wrap this up. Happy New Year to happy, everyone happy watching. Happy New Year. Yes. Absolutely. Dude, what are you guys going to do for New Year? What, what were, well, I guess, yeah, what are your big New Year's plans? Do you guys have anything crazy you're going to do? <sighs> New Year's plans. Uh, well, immediately when we're done here, I'm going to the patents office and I'm going to <laughs> file a new product <laughs> called the Edge Wise. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so that's my media plan. People were kicking off about edgewise comparing it to like <laughs> well well what about like clockwise? And it's like, how does that make any sense either? You wanna slowly rotate your point into a conversation? <laughs> what do you want about? There's nothing I love more than slowly rotating my point into one of our podcast <laughs> conversations. It's something I strive for every show we record. <sighs> And that's a wrap on 2021. See you guys next year. Or Here's a little preview of 2022 from Mr. Patillo. Hey guys, minor league fan Jack here with a look at next week's episode of Face. Andrew needs a new computer very badly. And he didn't look at the circle. Gavin thinks he's funny. Seriously, Andrew needs a new computer. Jeff continues to defend Home Alone. And once again, Andrew does not eat the pencil. All that and more on the next episode of Face.